So, uh, you may have heard of Ibn Khaldun. Those of you who are more familiar with history and medieval history, I think he's often called, a, he's an Arab and a Muslim, but he's called the father of modern history. He seems pretty enlightened. Um, but this is what he writes about Islamic law. <clears throat> Quote, in the Muslim community, jihad is a religious duty because of the universalism of the Muslim mission and the obligation to convert everybody to Islam, either by per persuasion or by force. The other religious groups did not have a universal mission, and the holy war was not a religious duty for them, save only for purposes of defense, like the Crusades. We can get into that. They, other religions, are merely required <clears throat> to establish their religion among their own people. But Islam is under obligation to gain power over other nations. So this is a very enlightened and authoritative Muslim scholar who wrote this. And then you move forward to here, uh, the West, in the age before political correctness hijacked academia and scholarship, <clears throat> there's, for example, uh, the Encyclopedia of Islam, which is really a great resource. And it was, it's many, viol many volumes. When I worked at the Library of Congress, it was my main go-to source. And it was written, the reason for that is it was written right around the 1900s. So there was very little political correctness. So <clears throat> when you look at the entry for jihad in the Encyclopedia of Islam, it says that Quote, the spread of Islam by arms is a religious duty <clears throat> upon Muslims in general. Jihad must continue to be done until the whole world is under the rule of Islam. Islam must completely be made over before the doctrine of jihad or warfare to spread Islamic rule can be eliminated. So this is how even Western scholars understood Islam, which is what it was and is, before you know, this, we can get into the whole new political correct age that just has nothing to do with reality. But insofar as conquered Christians who, got, who get conquered by Islam, remember Quran 929 is the pivotal one. And it talks about paying jizya. Jizya is an Arabic word and all it means is substitute. So if I pay jizya, it means I'm ransoming my life because without the jizya, I should die. Because instead of taking my life, the substitute is the money. And so this became a part of it. And it's really, it's, to give you an example of the political correctness, Today, it's called protection. And a lot of academics will tell you it was, it's protection money from outside sources, as if Christians were paying Muslims money to protect them from Mongolian invaders. That was never the case. It was protection money from Muslims themselves. And that's very clear in Islamic books. Um, so these are the games. It was extortion. But also, there was the idea of the Christian and the Jew and the non-Muslim has to live in humiliation. Because you'll recall Quran 929 says, fight them until they pay tribute and feel themselves utterly subdued. And so when these people would come and pay their tribute, sometimes they were required to walk on all fours. They'd pull their hair, the, the tax collector, they'd slap them, they'd spit on them, because that was part of the doctrine. And this too comes back to Muhammad. Muhammad said in an authoritative hadith, do not, do not it initiate the salam or the peace greeting to the Jews and Christians. If you meet any of them in a road, push them into the narrowest corner, basically bully them. Um, and this goes to another doctrine, which I don't want to spend too much time on. It's called loyalty and enmity, but it's, it's also fortified by Islamic verses. And it's basically Muslims do not befriend on Muslims, even if it's their fathers, their brothers, or whosoever. And I recently watched a very famous Islamic cleric who said, because in Islam, a man, a Muslim man, can marry a Christian woman or a Jewish woman because they're people of the book. But this cleric, and I've seen others say it, he must hate her in his heart because she is an infidel. So he can enjoy her physically, he can enjoy her wealth, he can enjoy her child rearing, but he has to hate her. And according to the aforementioned hadith from Muhammad, he can't even greet her. So the only way he can greet her is if he comes in a room and she's there and there's other Muslims and he gives a generic hello to everyone because he's greeting Muslims. But she can feel like she's being greeted. 